Welcome to Spotlight on Churches, where we illuminate the soulful heartbeat of our local communities. Join us for a guided tour through the diverse and dynamic world of nearby congregations, from centuries-old landmarks to modern worship spaces. Together, we'll explore the spiritual tapestry woven throughout our neighborhoods, uncovering the stories, traditions, and impactful outreach efforts that make each church a beacon of hope and compassion. Let's celebrate the beauty and significance of our local churches, honoring their vital role in nurturing faith and fostering connection. This is Spotlight on Churches. God sent his son. Joseph the rest of his life. What happened after? After the cross. After the 
resurrection. I wonder what Joseph thought about when he thought about that tomb that, that he had prepared, that he had built, and that Jesus had used. Now that Jesus had used it, I wonder how he thought about that tomb. When he looked at that tomb, I wonder if he said, man, man, that, that tomb that I, 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 I really don't want to go there. I, I, oh, before he'd been thinking, I'm not prepared. I'm not ready to go there, but I'm prepared for death. Uh, I'm, I'm prepared for people to be able to remember me. I'm prepared for, for I want to leave a legacy behind me. Now he's thinking to himself, oh, that tomb right there, that tomb, it doesn't have a value to me anymore uh, because Jesus had been there first. Do you realize that death is coming to all of us? Do you realize that there's coming a time that we're going to die? But for those of us that are saved, those of us that are born again, death no longer has the value that it once had because we don't look at death as something that has value anymore because Jesus has been there first. Amen. Death doesn't bother me. Death doesn't worry me. I don't lay awake at night thinking that about what happens when I die. I don't lay there thinking and fearing about that I'm going to die. I've already accepted in my heart that one day I'm going to quit breathing. But that does not mean I'm going to be dead. It means that my body is going to cease to live. But I will live on. Why? Because Jesus has been to my grave first. Amen. 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 There was a time that the tomb had great power. Oh, it had power. Oh, the tomb had a power because inside of it was death. And death had great authority. Death had great power over man. It manipulated and controlled because of its finality. I ah, grave was final. That's your final resting place is the way that we put it. The grave has a power. But let me tell you, the grave lost its power. Uh, not because of me, but because Jesus went there first. Because the grave and all of its power and all of its authority, when Jesus was placed in that tomb, and Jesus went to that grave, and Jesus faced death, death lost its grip, and death lost its ability to hold mankind for all of eternity as it had for thousands of years prior because one man went to the grave and came victorious, Jesus went there first. Amen. 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 Preacher, why aren't you afraid? Because your faith is great? No, because Jesus went there first. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Can I make this real? Do you remember the name of that one guy that got out of a boat and walked on water? <laughs> Who was that guy? Peter. Peter. Oh yeah, Peter walked on water. Why did Peter get out of the boat and walk on water? What made him think he could? Jesus did it first. Look, look towards Jesus. Uh -huh. Eyes on Jesus. Because Jesus did it first. Because Jesus came walking on the water. And when he saw him walking on the water, he said, Lord, if that be you, bid me come unto you. And Jesus said, come. It wasn't Jesus' idea for him to walk on water. It was Peter's idea to walk on water. Why? Because he saw Jesus do it first. You want to know why I think that I'm going to get out of the grave one of these days? Because Jesus did it first. You want to know why I think uh, that I'm going to rise to meet Him in the air? Because Jesus did it first. You want to know why I think uh, that the grave has no authority or power over me and my soul? Uh, because Jesus did it first. Amen. That's exciting. Isn't that exciting? 
tomb. The grave lost its hold on man. Oh, they would put a man in the ground. They would put the dirt over top of it and cover it with rocks, whatever they did. Roll a stone in front of it if it was a tomb. But they would put him in the earth. And the earth would claim. It would reclaim the body. And it would decompose and return back to the earth from whence it came. We still repeat those phrases today. Oh. Oh. But here's what the Bible says about Jesus. It says that He did not see any corruption. His body did not decompose. It had not started that decomp decomposition process because it had been visited by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that same Spirit that raised Jesus up will raise us up one of these days. Oh, you see, the grave lost its hold over humanity, over the body, over the soul. And it can no longer hold you and I. Amen. It is going to give up. It is going to give up the dead. Oh, oh, wait a minute, preacher. Only, only the Christians are going to resurrect. No. No. Bible says that the, the water, the seeds will give up their dead. And the earth will give up its dead. It's not just going to resurrect the church. But only the church is going home. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everybody's going to be resurrected. But when they're resurrected, they'll be resurrected to judgment. They'll have to face judgment. But the church, the church will have already been judged. And we will come up and we will go and be with Him. Why do you think, preacher, that you're going to meet Him in the air? Because 40 days later, the thing after the resurrection, 40 days later, they went out. Jesus went out on the hillside of Judea and there a cloud gathered around Him and He raised up into the air and He disappeared. And the angel standing by said, Oh, why are you men of Galilee? Why do you stand here gazing? That same Jesus that you see going away is going to come again in white manner. Yes. yes. Oh, why do I think I'm going to raise? Because Jesus already did it first. Amen. Let's go back and visit Joseph for a minute. You want to hear some interesting things? You don't find these in the scripture. You have to do some study. You ever wonder why that they have a tomb over there in in Israel, in Jerusalem? Why they have a tomb that is empty that people go visit? You ever wondered why it's still empty? Why didn't Joseph use it? Because according to history. According to history and other resources, Joseph of Arimathea took up residence with the apostles. Wherever they went, he went. Him and Nicodemus, who were rich, they began to take care of the poor. And according to history, both of them sold all of their belongings and gave it to the poor to take care of them. Including a tomb that he was never, that he had never used. According to history, Joseph of Arimathea, he was there, according to history, not according to the scripture, but according to history, he was there with the disciples when they had 
the discussion about who it was that would replace Judas. And ultimately, according to history, he did become a priest. You want to know why I say all of that? Because when you look up Joseph of Arimathea, you'll find out that he was he died and was buried in the United Kingdom. He didn't use a tomb. Why didn't he use a tomb? Because he had already died. He had already died. He had died out to sin and had resurrected when he had received the Holy Spirit and it moved on the inside and he that was dead came to life. It was quickened his mortal body. You see, I want to explain something to you. I'm not afraid of the grave because I've already died out to sin. I'm not afraid of the grave because the grave isn't someplace that I'm going to be. I'm already died. You may go to a place where you think I'm at and you may stand there and try to visit with me, but I'm going to tell you something and I believe it with all of my heart. Oh, I will not be there. I will not be there. You'll think that I'm crazy with the way that I believe because it's contrary to most people. But I will tell you, I don't go down to the cemetery in Iberia and go stand there over my parents' graves. I don't do that. Why? Because they aren't there! <laughs> buried their bodies there but there in the arms of Jesus Amen. and if I have anything to say to them I don't say it to a cold stone or a dirty earth I look up to heaven and I tell my father oh I'd like for you to tell Tell me now, 
why we can't overcome it. Oh, you all got quiet. I thought you said you believed. I thought you said you believed the Word of God to be truth. That's why I told you, get over your opinion. Because your opinion came from down there, not up there. That's right. Your opinion is of the devil. The devil's convinced you you can't. My dad had one saying that I'll never forget, and I believe it came directly from heaven. Can't never did nothing. Yep. Amen. And you believe you can't overcome, then you've already failed. That's right. That's right. You believe you can't overcome addiction, you've already failed. Amen. You've got to believe you can. Preacher, preacher, get off, come on, preacher, you can't tell me that I can. Oh, you don't know how hard it is. You don't know what sin I have control it had over me either. But let me tell you, I am a victor today. Not because of me, but because Jesus did it first. Amen. Because Jesus did it first. Jesus overcame it. Oh, I can't overcome. I can't overcome anxiety. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I am invading your privacy. I am invading. I'm stomping on your toes right now because anxiety, preacher, anxiety is real. And you should know that anxiety. Oh, I do. I know it's real. But I also know that the Word of God is true. Yes. Come on. And the Word of God cannot lie. That's right. And that as long as you give anxiety more power than the Word of God, anxiety will rule. But if you will give the power over to the Word, it will gain control of your anxiety. Will you never have trouble with it? Will it never raise its ugly head? Sure it's going to. Sure it's going to be there. But I will tell you this, you can overcome it every time by the Word of God. Amen. That's right. True. Yeah. Why? How do you believe that? Because he told me to be anxious for nothing. Oh, but Jesus never had any of that. Jesus never did. Oh, but Jesus did it first. Jesus did it first. I'm going to throw this one in for free and then I'll give the invitation. What happened in the Garden of Gethsemane that night? When Jesus was praying, what happened? His sweat fell as great drops of blood. Go look that up. If you don't believe me, go look that up. That is a psychiatric condition. When a person gets to a place that they have come to such a mental breakdown, it will cause a physical reaction in the body causing the red, red blood cells to separate and come to the surface and mingle with the sweat on the body and it will fall and drop as drops of blood. That's what that condition was. That's what was going on in the garden. His mental state, his anxiety, the pressure, all of that was on him, but yet he believed the words of his father above what his body was doing to him and said, nevertheless, but your will be done and not mine. I'm going on. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needed to hear that this morning. Hmm. Why? Why did, why did he keep going? Because he had to do everything first for you. He had to be the first fruits of the grave. He had to be the first fruits of death. He had to be the resurrection. Amen. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. So here we are. Joseph had prepared for his death. Joseph had power, influence, authority, wealth. But in all of that, he was afraid to die. 
And then Joseph gave up his authority, gave up his wealth, gave up his influence, gave up everything that he had to live for Christ and had no concern about death. Kind of tells me that it's not how you die. It's how you live. not living according to the will of God. You need to make a change. So many times we focus our life based on our opinion. I think this is okay. I think that's okay. I think I can do this. I think I can get away with that. I think I think that prayer that I prayed when I was nine is good enough. Now, since you were nine, have you actually served him? Or did you just pray? Centurion believed. Centurion said, Surely this was the Son of God. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. He believed it. The Bible says that even the devils in hell, they tremble in fear. They believe. It's not how you believe. <laughs> but how do I live right? Hi, I'm Pastor Chris Stewart with Freedom Fellowship Church. I want to thank you for watching our services today and give you a personal invitation to come out and be with us sometime. We are located at 8895 Harding Highway East, Galleon, Ohio. And that is between Caledonia and Iberia right on State Route 309. Our service times are Sundays. Uh, worship, our Sunday school is at 10, and our worship service is at 11 a.m. And then Thursday evenings, we have it at 7 p.m. And the fourth Saturday of each month, we have a food pantry that is open from 10 until 1. And you can find out more about our ministries and our work at ffcministries.org.